Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Overwatch Weekly. This week, of course, is the big, big week. This past weekend was BlizzCon 2019, and in it, we got a bunch of stuff related to Overwatch and Overwatch 2, uh, which I'm sure you all know about by now. Today, I wanted to just kind of put everything together that I have found. Um, I have a bunch of different things. The top link in the description is going to be a link to the BlizzCon page uh, for Overwatch videos in the panels from this year that you can watch. Um, now, some of them you can only watch if you have a virtual ticket. So I will try to focus on the ones that you can watch. Um, which you can watch anything that doesn't have the virtual ticket icon. Uh, so that you can watch all the World Cup stuff, as usual. Um, and then you can also watch the Overwatch League 2020 Watchpoint Season Preview, which we'll talk about a little bit later. You can watch an interview with Michael Chu that he did with uh, some of the All Access people. And then you can watch the Overwatch What's Next panel, which are all, those are all the big ones, really. Um, so we'll talk, obviously, about all of the stuff that needs to be talked about. But let's start, of course, just by talking about Overwatch 2. Because Overwatch 2 is the big thing that we saw come out of um, the, the, the event. So, to begin... Uh, Obviously, it is Overwatch 2. It is a sequel. But Jeff Kaplan made it very clear that they were trying to redefine what a sequel is. Uh, uh, and that involves a number of different things. If you want to see all of the gameplay for Overwatch 2 or the announcement cinematic, all that kind of stuff, once again, the description is where it's linked. And also, uh, the what's next panel, whatnot, all that kind of stuff you can find in the, the link in the description. The description. It's all there, so I recommend you watch that if you want more information, if you want to make sure you're not missing anything. Uh, that's the thing that I would 100% suggest that um, you go to. So, with the game, and with it being a redefined sequel, what that basically means is that Overwatch 2, uh, to be completely honest with you, uh, is pretty much just a DLC. Um, expansion. It's not really a full sequel uh, in the sense that basically the way that the Overwatch 2 game and the Overwatch 1 game will be separated is just based on the PvE stuff, which is central to Overwatch 2. Overwatch 2, at the end of the day, is a PvE game with the story missions and these hero missions and all this other stuff that we've seen, kind of these hero talents and the different items that you can get in these missions and all that kind of stuff that is unique to overwatch 2. the new pvp mode push as well as all the new future maps and the redone um, visual style and all that kind of stuff is going to come to overwatch 1 in the future so the game's not really a sequel um i don't know how the pricing is going to work nor do we have any release date that's the kind of stuff that we haven't fully gotten yet but that's that's where we are with that um as i said a lot of information in the what's next panel if you want to watch that they give a lot more information about the game for that one of the things that is interesting that i think needs to be mentioned is that they've been very clear that they don't have a release date but they've given kind of like weird timelines <laughs> to to kind of give some idea of when it's going to come out. There was a a group panel, like a group dev panel, where a bunch of um, media members and content creators basically had to interview uh, the, the devs and get some information about what is coming and what isn't coming, all that kind of stuff. And, and obviously some of the stuff they don't answer, but uh, Hitscan put out a video of at least some of that interview. I don't think it was the whole thing. And I'm hoping that eventually I can find the full video um, because I, I like these types of things um, bec 
because it's usually the most interesting thing. And without getting that, it's a little bit difficult to fully get the um, full story about the game. It's usually these kinds of interviews that are the best types of interviews to get. They're usually the ones that uh, you learn the most from. We don't have the full thing. But hit scans is about 15 minutes long. There's some really important questions, some really good questions in it. So I wanted to cover that um, and some of the information that we learned from that. So one of the big things, something I mentioned already, is that the Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2 clients will eventually merge into one client when Overwatch 2 is released. So we're going to get the same art style as Overwatch 2. We're going to get all the same heroes and all the same maps and all the same modes. and Everything that's new in Overwatch 2 will become a part of Overwatch 1 with the exception of the PvE side of it. So if you have Overwatch 1 and you don't care about the PvE, nothing's going to really change for you. You don't have to buy the PvE. It'll just not be available to you. Uh, and that's something that I think is very important. Now, one of the things that I was worried about is there was very little information given by Jeff Kaplan uh, about what types of things we could expect going forward with Overwatch and the, the main base game that we are currently playing. Uh, because in the What's Next panel and in the reveal uh, you know, thing, Jeff said, look, we're not going to just abandon the base game. We're not going to abandon the game that's live right now. We're going to do stuff for it. You're going to see um, different things for that. We never actually got any confirmation about what types of things we would get, except for, you know, we know we're getting like a, a death match that you can play when you're queued up for matches. Um, you can enter the training room when you're queued up for matches. We knew that kind of stuff. So he went a little bit further into the kinds of things we can expect to get in the Overwatch base game um, or in Overwatch 1 in between now and the release of Overwatch 2. And the, we're getting... Obviously, like I said, those things that I said, those new the new deathmatch mode, you can queue up for the workshop, you can queue up for training mode, or the training room. You can also join the training room with friends now, which you could never do before. Now you can. Uh, once this PTR patch hits, which I believe, based on what we have seen, it's going to hit next week. Uh, Jeff Kaplan had a clarification because it was supposed to drop um, potentially this week. Um, we got an update this week, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But uh, the PTR patch is going to drop most likely next week. Uh, and with it, we will get to do this new deathmatch and all this other stuff. But the other thing that he said uh, that is going to come in the future between now and the release of Overwatch 2 is at least one new hero. Now, we don't know who it is, um, but they, they guaranteed and promised that we would get at least one new hero, and that hero would not be Sojourn. Um, now, if I had to guess, I would say it'll probably be, probably be Echo, just based on the amount of stuff we've seen about Echo with Overwatch 2, it seems weird that they would have Echo release um, with Overwatch 2 for the first time uh, when you see the role she plays in the main cinematic and whatnot. Like, here's this character that you only know about from these cinematics. Uh, have fun. It's like, well, that seems, um, that seems a little strange to me that we're just not going to get this character in, in Overwatch 1. So my guess is we'll probably get Echo and we might get another one, uh, but we, we don't have a release timeline officially um but we've gotten some weird things right we can we can say it won't be releasing this year in in 2019 uh, and it won't be releasing before the third season of the overwatch league begins in early february so we know it won't be releasing in january early february or december or this month so we know that for a fact where it's interesting uh, is Jeff Kaplan mentioned multiple times that he expects them to talk about Overwatch 2 again at BlizzCon, which of course they would. They're going to talk about the game no matter what at BlizzCon, whether it's out or not. Um, but it seemed like his thing was he was saying, we're going to go dark until BlizzCon, and you won't be hearing about the game until BlizzCon. But there was a tweet from AlphaCast, who is a, uh, he's a French YouTuber, I believe. I don't know exactly what he is. Um... I, I don't speak French, so I don't actually know um, what what it is that he does. But he tweeted out that, uh, so regarding release date, at Mr. Dariv, who is from uh, jewvideo.com, I don't know how you pronounce that, assured me that the release window for Overwatch 2 by Blizzard is around fall 2020. Seems like Jeff Kaplan himself gave them this info. 
keep in mind this is not confirmed information this was not something that Jeff Kaplan ever said so we don't know for sure if that's the case um, but according to this the release window for Overwatch 2 is fall 2020 I don't know if that's true or not <laughs> um, I have no reason to believe that it isn't but I also have no reason to believe that it is so I don't know if that's actually going to be something that we get so just keep that in mind um, because that's something that could be true but I'm not too positive if that's going to end up being true the other thing that they confirmed that was interesting is something else coming to the base game of Overwatch, which we actually have on the live servers, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, is the map rotation that is coming to competitive play. But we'll talk about that here in a little bit. The last thing I want to talk about uh, in terms of Overwatch 2 related stuff from BlizzCon was the Evolving the Art panel. Now this is a panel that is blocked behind the paywall of the virtual ticket, but uh, there's a recap of it. Uh, that I have linked in the description down below from Blizzard's website. And the basic uh, side of it is they wanted to make the heroes look newer uh, while keeping their same kind of basic design. So they had to make some changes, but they tried to do what they could to make the heroes still feel like the same characters. And then when it came to evolving the world, they wanted to do a lot more to make um, the world feel natural. And so they wanted to have places where you had different environments and whatnot so it wasn't just like a map where it was like all desert or a map where it was all something and all everything right you know it was all snow or it was all city they wanted to kind of have some some different environments in some of these maps and the way it worked so that's that's really all of the stuff we got from overwatch 2 and i know it seems like it's not a lot of information and at the end of the day it, it really isn't um you know I, the thing that annoyed me the most for a while was the fact that we didn't have any real information on what to expect going forward with the game of, of Overwatch 1. Now we have stuff um, and it's a lot better so we know what's coming at least somewhat in the future but it still seems very difficult because they just didn't really give us any reason to believe there would be much but like I said we're getting at least one fighter so we can hope that that won't be too long from now we are not getting a BlizzCon time period fighter seemingly now we could um, you know it's not impossible um, you know we haven't gotten a PTR update so the PTR patch drops next week next Thursday or next Tuesday whatever day it is there's a possibility um that there could be a new fighter on thursday i wouldn't expect it though i'd expect if they're going to drop a new fighter they'd probably wait until uh january february march that time frame for a new hero uh they also confirmed that there won't be any new mission for the archives event this year because they're focusing on overwatch 2 which is perfectly fine i expected that to be the case they also showed off um a sigma winter wonderland skin um, which I will have linked in the description uh, because it's pretty cool and I really like it and I think you would enjoy it as well um, but you'll see that when it comes out I don't want to show that because people don't want to see it but if it is something that you do want to see then I figured uh, you know it's there if you want it but that is everything really that I can think of for Overwatch 2 related stuff if there is more um, that I just am not aware of um, or I missed I will definitely um, I'll definitely let you all know um, and I'll, I'll include it in uh, future videos um, like next week's Overwatch Weekly or whatever I'll make sure you guys know uh, what stuff I missed but I don't think I missed anything major but you know who knows maybe I did let's talk about the other side of Overwatch at the BlizzCon 2019 thing uh, <laughs> and that was the Overwatch World Cup and this year was a uh, a big uh, a big year and that is because we have a new champion for the Overwatch World Cup Team South Korea did not win this year nor did they get second they were the bronze medalists 
after losing in the semifinals to Team USA. Uh, and Team USA, of course, also was the team that ended up winning it all, beating China 3-0 in the Overwatch World Cup Finals. Big moment, I think. Uh, definitely a big moment for the history of esports, and it's definitely uh, just something different. I don't think this is the kind of thing that many people... I, I didn't expect Team USA to win. I was originally going to do a predictions video uh, on Friday last week, but I just op I opted not to because, one, I was busy. Two, I just felt like it's BlizzCon. People are going to watch BlizzCon anyway, so who cares about what I have to say about the, the World Cup. But Team USA won, and they, they won convincingly. Uh, they, they were the best team. Uh, Sinatra and Corey and Space and Super and Moth and Raucous and KSF all played incredibly well. I mean, KSF literally won them uh, the series against South Korea on Eichenwald. I mean, he carried that final fight. It was incredible. It was an, it was an insane run for Team USA. They didn't lose a single match in the group stages. They lost one map when they got through the elimination bracket, and that was with South Korea. They drew one map against South Korea, but it was pretty dominant. Sinatra won the World Cup MVP. Um... And it was, it was a big, big, big uh, thing for Team USA. I have a link in the description just kind of about Team USA's win and whatnot. And of course, if you want to watch any of the, <clears throat> the matches, like I said, they are linked uh, in that BlizzCon page <clears throat> that I, I mentioned before. But, but that's, um, that's that um, for the World Cup. I, I enjoyed it this year. I thought it was really cool. I, I, a lot of people didn't like the way they did it this year because they're like teams couldn't secure their travel and all this other stuff. At the end of the day, teams that ended up getting to BlizzCon are teams that never would have had the ability to play in the World Cup in the past, right? Team Ireland, um, Team Mexico, um, Team Saudi Arabia, Team Colombia. These are teams who we never would have seen in the World Cup uh, if not for this format where it was, we you just... You fly out. If you raise the money, you come out here. We'll pay for some of it. You know, we'll, we'll cover at least, you know, a small percentage of it. But, you know, realistically, it's not um, worthwhile to cover the travel for 100 teams. It's a lot of money. Um, and some of these teams aren't going to be that great of, of competition anyway. But it's a lot of it's for the players. These players just want to go to BlizzCon. So now they have the ability to fly out. And they just get to go to BlizzCon because they're playing in the World Cup. Regardless of if they get out in the first match in the preliminary round, they still are at BlizzCon. And for a lot of these players, that's enough. A lot of these players just want to be able to go to BlizzCon. Uh, and now they're here and they have the ability to play these games. You know, they can play Overwatch 2. They can come to BlizzCon. They can just enjoy it. They can watch this event in person. They don't get that ability for the most part. Uh, I think that's a huge part of why this format was what they went with, and it's why I think it worked. But those are my thoughts on that. Let's move into these patch notes that we have, the final thing for the week. Um, so, the general update is that there's a new gameplay option, the high precision mouse input. Enabling this option will allow Overwatch to use your mouse's native polling rate when determining exactly where to shoot. Note, there may be a slight performance cost to enabling this option. And then there's a link to a little... Um, thing within the uh, patch notes. There's a thing that's this is more details we found here. You click on that and it'll bring you to a blog post that's really, really good, that's really in-depth, but also very confusing if you don't understand what it is. And there's a lot of visuals and video elements to it that I think you need to see to understand it. So if you're curious to learn more about that, click that thing in on the uh, page. As I mentioned before, we have the new um, competitive updates. There's two updates, one of them being the map pool, the other one being that starting with season 19, they are moving the beginning and end of competitive play seasons from the first day of every other month to the first Thursday of every other month. And they will also be starting the season later in the day to better correspond with developer availability during the day. So season 19 now starts on November 7th at 1800 UTC, which is 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern interesting about that is that that's tomorrow um, I also didn't know that the seasons were the first day of every other month I, I had no idea that, that was actually true 
uh, <laughs> I, that's new to that's new to me. I didn't know that was a thing. And as I mentioned, they will also be introducing a rotating seasonal map pool to competitive play starting with season 19. The initial map pool for season 19 is 12 maps with three for each game mode. Future competitive seasons will see maps rotating in and out of the pool, providing each season with a different experience and identity. Information about the current maps available in the map pool is available by opening the information panel of the competitive play card. <clears throat> but I'm sure people want to know what the map pool is, so let's go through with it. On Assault, it's Hanamura, Temple of Anubis, and Volskaya Industries. Jeff Kaplan made a very clear point saying that Horizon or Colony and Paris would not be in the map pool. On Hybrid, you have Hollywood, King's Row, and Eichenwald. On Control, you have Nepal, Lijiang Tower, and Busan. And on Escort, it is Dorado, Watchpoint, Gibraltar, and Havana. There's, of course, some workshop updates as well. Uh, some variable renaming and uh, custom strings, all that kind of stuff. So if you want to check out workshop stuff, that's, that's down there if you care about that. Last thing in this is some hero updates. You got a general hero update, which is that Maze, Ice Wall, Baptiste's Immortality Field, and Sigma's Gravitic, Gravitic Flux will now more heavily prefer edges over placing as far away as possible. Baptiste's Biotic Launcher uh, had its recovery decrease from 0.45 to 0.36 seconds. The random spread was removed, and the damage falloff range now begins at 25 meters up from 20. And finally, Torbjorn's Molten Core cost was reduced by 10%. And then there's, of course, a number of bug fixes. But that is everything that has happened in this past week. Um, some good information as a result of BlizzCon. Obviously, decent amount of stuff to cover. So I recommend if you want more and you want more like accurate information and everything to be 100% from the mouths of the developers or you want to watch the World Cup, anything like that, check out all the links in the description. They will lead you to what you need to see what you want to see. But that is everything I have for you today. If you enjoyed, consider liking and subscribing. If you want more content like this and future Overwatch 2 content, uh, consider liking and subscribing for that. Uh, and uh, comment down below what you think about Overwatch 2 uh, or the World Cup or this new update or you know the map pool, anything like that. I would love to hear what you have to say, but that's all I have for you today. So thank you once again, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.